Hello everybody, this is Peter from the Ultimate WordPress Guide and welcome to another PyotNet Forms tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a very nice customized login or registration form that the end user or the website visitor can access from your website. So as you can see here, um, I've got a login or a registration form um, where the user can fill in all of his details and click register. On the login side, he can enter his, uh, his username or email, password, click on the remember me option to save that in the cache um, and he can log in or if he's forgotten his password, that can redirect him to the accounts page where he can go ahead, he or she can go ahead and reset their password. So very simply, I've got a web page, any web page where I've got a button or a link that uh, triggers up the pop-up which gives me the option to log in or register. So let's take a look first at, uh, at how it works um, and how it creates the user um, and how it logs in the user and then I'll take you through exactly how that's done. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that uh, I am already a user or I think that I'm a user. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in my username. I'll give it the password that I think it is. I'll say, yep, I want the website to remember me and I'll click on login. Now, here is where I get the message and it says, uh oh, you are not a user of our website. Please check your username again or try your email address. Okay, so that means I'm not a registered user yet. So let's go ahead and register myself on the website first. So I'll head over to the register side and this is where I'll fill in my information. So we'll just give it some dummy Username, email information, let's say John. Let's give John a password. We'll go ahead and we'll confirm that password and I'll click on register. So when you create these forms, you can set up various redirects on both the registration and the login form. They could be the same, they could be different. In this instance, in this example, I've created two separate pages, very simple pages just to show you the difference. So this page is called redirect after registration. Um, and I'm just gonna go, uh, uh, go ahead and log out here. So I'll log out of the portal completely and I'll go back into the form and load up the main page again. I'll click on the link and now that I've already registered, I'll just go ahead and add in my user credentials. I'll say, yep, remember me and I'll click on the login link. And here you can see it's redirected me to a different page. Yeah. So again, here yeah, I'll just go ahead and log out and we'll go back to the front end and I'll show you how we've built this. Okay. So there's really four key components that I need um, to make this work. Uh, the first being not a mandatory one. So this is just a simple button that I've created where I'm invoking a pop up form. The second one is a template that is the login form itself. Then I have, let me just log in. Next I have the registration form, which is also a template. And then I also have the pop-up form, which I trigger from the, the button on the main page, which is this one. Okay. So these, if I go back into my Elemental dashboard, you can see that I've got a couple of saved templates here. So I've got the registration form, I've got the login form, and if I head over to the pop-up section, you'll see there I have a login pop-up form, which is this. Okay, so first things first, I wanna go ahead first off and create a new template. So I can go over to the save templates area, click on add new, create a new login form template, which is this over here. And just very simply, I've created a couple of fields. I've created a username or an email field. I've created a password field, a remember me field, login button, and a lost your password. So in order to get to these, um, if I head down to my elements section and down to the Byte.net add-ons uh, form builder, I drag and drop the field widget onto the canvas. Um, and this is where I fill in some details. Now again, if you've seen any of my previous Byte.net uh, add-ons videos, very importantly around the form builder is the form ID, which needs to be consistent 
across every single field that I create in a particular form. So in this instance, I've created it as a form ID of login form. I've given it a field ID of username or email, which is okay. It's just a normal text field and I've given it placeholder text. I could have gone and given it a label and made the label to display and that would just display the label above the field. Next up, I have the password field. Again, the form ID remains the same. I've given it a field ID of password and I've given it a no echo password type field, which, um, which will just hide the password as the user types it. You know, nothing new there. And then on the remember me field, it's just a very simple acceptance field. So again here, form ID, I've got a field ID. I've selected type as acceptance. I could also use a checkbox. Um, and then under the acceptance test uh, text, I've just said, remember me. Okay, now on the login button, this is where the magic really happens. Um, again here, I've given it a form ID. And under the actions after submit, I've done two things. I've set it to a login option. I've then also set it to a redirect option, which will then give me these two options below, which is the login and the redirect option. So by going to the login field first, it asks me for three short codes of the fields that I have in this form. So it asks me for the short code of the username or email, for the password and for the remember field. If you're not sure where to get them, if you head over to any one of these fields under the shortcode section, just go ahead and copy that shortcode um, and head back over to the button on the login area and then just submit all of these fields. Okay, now the forgot your password is a particular widget or an element that's available also from the form builder library. Um, so you can see if you head down to the page form builder, you'll see that there's the lost password option. So if I just drag that in, you'll see that it drops in that lost your password link and you can style it uh, any way you choose. Okay, so I'll just delete that. Next over to the redirect section and this, as I mentioned before, this is where I can drop in the page URL that I want the login form to redirect to after I click the login button. Now I can drop in the URL, I can select whether I want to open in a new tab or not. Just update it. And then I'll head over to the registration form. Same thing, I'll create a new template and I'll do pretty much the same things as I've done in the login form. So I'll go and create a couple of fields. So I've got a first name and here you can see my form ID is different because it is a different form. Um, and I've done the same for the last name field, which is a text field, the email, which is an email field, username, text field. And then I have my two password fields, the one for the password, and the second one for the confirmation of that password. So again, if I head over to the registration button, um, and that is the, if I head back over to the PyNet form builder, you'll see that I have the field, which is the fields that I've used above here. And then I specifically use the submit item that is part of the form builder. I don't use a normal button, okay? So if I go to the register there, and I click on the actions after submit. I've done very similar to the login form. I've set up a redirect, but here I've set up the register option instead of the login option. Okay, so if I then go over to the register menu, here is where I can specify first and foremost what the role of that person is when I create that new user. So just for the intent of this video, I'm creating all new users as administrators because with Elementor, um, I cannot uh, preview a draft of, uh, of a template if, uh, if I'm not subscribed as anyone else um, other than an administrator. So same thing here. I've got all the form fields and each of them has its own individual shortcode. So I need to go and copy and paste each of the shortcodes for the email, for the username, for the password, for the password confirmation, um, all of that into the respective fields. Um, and then I also have a message. So if my password is incorrect, um, I can display a message for the incorrect password. And then I've got two more fields, which is the, the first name and the last name. And then just before we head out, uh, back onto the submit button and the redirect section, very similar, this is the same really. 
um, to the redirect option that I have on the login form. So this is where I go in and drop in my URL for the page that it needs to redirect to after registration. Okay, and that's pretty much it from the, from the registration and the login form side. So if I head over to the pop-up next, very simple, it's a, it's a normal Elementor pop-up. So if I go back to my Elementor pop-ups, I click on add new, I select the pop-up type, I give it a name, um, and that will store the pop-up in this area. Okay, so back to my save templates. Again, as before, very important, these are the two template shortcode IDs that I'll need to bring them into the, the pop-up. So first and foremost, I've gone ahead and I've just placed a normal uh, Elementor image in, which could be your company logo, which is uh, on the front of the pop-up. And then I've taken the content switcher, which again, if you go back to the PyFnet form builder uh, area and, and down to the free widgets, you'll see that the content switcher is actually a free widget that's available. So I can drag that on there and it gives me the option to fill in the details of both the sections that I have. Now I can either use an image, I can put some normal text in or the editor, but what I'm really after is being able to go ahead and put in a template shortcode. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete this one and I'll head over to the one that I've already created. Um, and over to the content section, you'll see that I've got a login section, it's an Elementor template, and I've copied and pasted the Elementor login form shortcode from here, and I've pasted it into that area. And I've done exactly the same on the registration side. So I've got register, Elementor template, and I've copied and pasted that shortcode. Okay, so once that's done, um, my work is pretty much done here um, from the creation of the login form. And then last but not least, I want to obviously um, pull up this pop-up form when I click the button. So if I head over to my main website page where, where the trigger is effectively, I'll head over to the button and in the content section under the button where I can set up the link, here I can either point it directly to a URL, but I wanna call up a pop-up. I'm gonna head over to the dynamic tag section I'll click over there and scroll down to the option where it says action pop-up. I'll select the pop-up and I'll click on the little wrench icon next to it and I'll go into my pop-up library or template library and I'll go and select the pop-up that I want to trigger when, uh, when I click this button. So let's go ahead and see if it still works. So if I head over to the main page, just do a quick refresh. And again here, I click the register button. I've created a user earlier, which is John. John should still have a password. Um, and if I click there and I click on the login form, we are back where we started. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you found it useful or helpful, please let us know. Head over to ultimatewpguide.com under the tutorial section. I've gone ahead and put all the template files for this tutorial on our website for you to download, use, customize, um, and use in any way you like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for more great content. I've put a few links to tools, services, and plugins that I use in the description below. These are affiliate links, so if you purchase a product through one of them, I will receive a commission at no additional cost to you, of course, and I only endorse products that I have personally used, and your support helps me put up more great content, so thanks. Bye for now.